You're listening to the Intuitive Souls Podcast. I am your host, Tara Caruso, and this podcast is designed to educate, inspire, and enlighten. Let's wake up together. Hey guys, welcome to the Intuitive Souls podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I am super excited that the universe led you here. If you are an OG, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the love. Thanks for all of the amazing feedback that you guys are giving me on iTunes and on Insta. You're just amazing, and I love each and every one of you. In today's episode, I asked my amazing soul friend, Hannah, to come on. She is actually a member of the Intuitive Souls monthly membership community, and we just talked about everything under the sun. These are always the best conversations because she's so open, so honest, and she really talks about her own journey and what she's learned and the things that have helped her. So I'm just so excited that she came on. She is also one of my amazing listeners. So Hannah, love you, girl. Thanks for coming on. So let's go ahead and listen in on this conversation because it's always a great time when we get together. So let go and check it out. You guys, today I have the pleasure of having one of my favorite people on. Her name is Hannah, and she is actually a makeup artist who is also a member of my Intuitive Souls monthly membership community. And I wanted her to come on because she's really amazing at talking about her journey and how she just came to where she is today. And Hannah, thank you. Thank you so much for being on. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you kind of came to being on my podcast? (laughs) Sure. Well, thank you for having me. Um, As you already mentioned, I am a full-time makeup artist. So I've been in the creative Um, flow for professionally for about 10 years now. Um, But I've always had a sense of spirit since I was younger. I just kind of wasn't able to put my finger on what that was exactly. Um, And it really was after the birth of my second child that I felt um, this deeper calling to figure out what was what was going on? What was this information I was getting? What were all these feelings that I was just being bombarded with that weren't mine? Um, And so I kind of set out on my path to um, uh, get some more information about that and to and to reconnect with myself on a deeper level. And so um, I happened to be on Facebook one day and just typed in intuitive group on uh, in the Facebook search and your beautiful little circle popped up. And that's kind of where our our love story begins. Yeah, Um, (laughs) that's where it all starts for me. So. Awesome. So I have a question. You said that you've been very sensitive your whole life. Did you know that you were an empath? Did you even know an empath existed? I knew yes and no. I didn't have a, I didn't know that there was a word for it. I just knew I was sensitive. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like, you know, the key word for people once they realize that they're empathic is they're like, oh, well, you know, everyone's always said that I've been overly sensitive my whole life. Um, and that was me. I mean, that is me to a T. I feel things very deeply. Um, mm-hmm. Anxiety is something that I've struggled with my whole life and not always knowing where it comes from. Um, and I just started, especially when I, as I came into like my more adulthood, realizing that I didn't like going to big groups of <clears throat> people. I didn't like going to car ramps. I didn't like going to you know, huge gatherings, even though I'm such a people person, it was like, what is going on? This doesn't make any sense. So yeah, those were kind of like some of the major markers for me that that made me kind of take a step back and, and want to know more about what was going on. Yeah. I always struggled with like, because I do enjoy talking to people. I enjoy laughing. I enjoy making memories with people and like connecting, but at the other side of it is like, I don't go to the mall. Like you, I'm dead serious. Like I cannot go to the mall. I maybe go to the mall once or twice a year just because it's just a lot. It's a lot for Mm -hmm. me. Just like going to Walmart is a lot for me. And it's like, I I do steer away, especially I steer away from children's birthday parties. I mean, you can like label (laughs) me a bad mom. (laughs) You can label me a bad mom if you want, but it's like, it takes me days just because of 
all of the energy, the intense energy of having young children running around and crazy and everything like that, it, it like screws me up. And then I also noticed, I don't know if this is true for you, that my kids are sensitive too. Yes. Like, yes. like to the point where like, we're at these amazing birthday parties where there's 40, 50 kids running around and my kid is crying. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. My youngest is still young enough that, um, it's harder to tell, but I would be shocked if she isn't, but my six year old, oh my gosh, a hundred percent. I mean, we can't even watch Disney movies if there is a sad scene because she will, she yeah. will, she will be hysterical. Or we were watching Pokemon the other night and <laughs> Pikachu had to say goodbye to Ash. And she was just in tears because <laughs> She recognized that there was happiness there. And she's like, these are happy tears, but also sad tears. And I'm like, if a six-year-old can recognize that there is something that you can cry and still be happy, like that to me is like, there is something deeper going on with her. Um, so a hundred percent. Yes. Our, our house is just filled with like all of the emotions. Oh my God. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. I have a funny story, kind of like the Pikachu one where <laughs> we were just like flipping through we were just flipping through the TV. Like this was like two years ago and all dogs go to heaven came on. Oh yeah. And I was like, it's the only thing on, you know, they're, they're sitting here quietly. I'm just going to leave it on. Right. That was the worst decision of my life. It's like a trigger. (laughs) Right. I mean, he, my, my oldest son, Nathan, I had to videotape him because he was so intensely upset (laughs) at the end of it. And, uh, and you know, how do you explain to him, you know, and I was like in a rough spot because it's like, he goes, well, why, you know, dogs don't die. Right. And I'm like, oh, this is tough. Mm. This is going to be, this is well, not- yeah. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. So, you know, he's holding on to my old basset hound crying. And I'm like, oh my oh. gosh, this is going to be, he, <laughs> this is going to be this is the, be- yeah, this is the beginning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you know, as far as being highly sensitive and stuff like that, you said some of the quirks about being highly sensitive where you love being around people and talking and stuff, but you don't like big crowds. Were there any other like things that stood out to you that, you know, you were like, okay, this is definitely a quirk of mine. Yes. Um, so since I've been a little kid, there have been a lot of experiences for me kind of in that period where you're falling asleep, you're awake, but you're not quite asleep. It's like that like middle period Uh where, you know, all the cool stuff happens. Um, but I would be able to feel colors and I recognize this as a kid as being like, Oh, that's interesting. Um, and as I got older, it happened less and less. But as I started meditating again, I would get those same feelings back. And same thing for you, like meditation being that kind of like gateway drug, if you will, to, you know, the spiritual world. But that is, um, that for me was like one of the big things too. And as a child, I also too could just sense a presence. I could just sense um, what I know now as spirit, but it, it freaked me out. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Um, so I was like deathly afraid of the dark until I was like, I hate to say like 10 or 11 years old wow. um, and would go and sleep in my parents' room. Um, I had to have the door open. And I think it was just because I could sense that there was something, you know, presence. Now I think it's probably, it was my spirit guides and perhaps my guardian angels, but you know, I could just, I could feel it, but I could not understand it. Mm. Um, so, you know, as I was going, getting older and kind of going through that ego period where I'm in college and figuring my life out and kind of my path, a lot of that stuff kind of, I don't want to say it went away, but I shut it down, um, Mm. without realizing it, but it's really since I've come into motherhood and, you know, you know, as being a mom, like a new part of your heart opens up and you really have to live on that love every day. And that's something just kind of reawakened in me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely feel that too because I think that it was like I feel like my path kind of went after motherhood really yeah. was because I started meditating just because I was losing my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. You know, like I just yeah. I was not I wasn't looking to connect with spirit. I wasn't, you know, it it really wasn't it was more of like the more mental health um calming aspect of it. And it was 
meditation that started like opening up doorways for me. And, you know, looking back at it, it's like, I don't think I would have meditated if I wasn't a stressed out stay at home mother. Right. You know what I mean? So that was a big thing for me. Now, as far as meditation is concerned, like I think we're on the same page where it's like, if you meditate, like shit's going to go down. Like I can't, you know, I get so many people asking me like, what can I do to strengthen your intuition? Meditate. 100%. meditate. What does your meditation look like? Like how many times a week do you meditate? How long do you meditate? Yeah. So, um, meditation for me is something I look forward to every day. It is like part of my self care Mm -hmm. me time, um, which looking back and now where I'm in my life, I kind of chuckle because that's something I would have never thought would be part of like my self care. Um, but I meditate every day for probably 20 to 30 minutes if I have the luxury of that time. Otherwise, if I can just get in five, five minutes in the morning to kind of set my intentions for the day and center myself before, you know, two screaming kids come running through my door, then that is amazing and excellent. Um, but, you know, simple things for me, just being outside and trying to connect with that energy, not even as much of a purposeful meditation, but it'll almost be like, repeating some kind of grounding mantras to myself. Um, if I don't have a time to to fully meditate, um, I find equally as helpful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think too, when you start your meditation journey, it's always expanding and changing and evolving, Mm -hmm. you know, because at the first, you know, when I first started, I just did two times a day, 20 minutes a day. And I did that for legit like seven months. Mm -hmm. you almost hit a plateau. So, to right. say, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to say like the benefits stop working, but it's almost like, I know I could get more out of this if I switch it right. up, I change yeah. it, or maybe I do a different sort of meditation. But I always, I, I meditate every single day, mm-hmm. at least for 15 minutes a day. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that do it inconsistently and they still mm-hmm. reap benefits from it. You know what I right. mean? Like they still, but to really get the full feel of meditation and the benefits of it, I think you need to do it every day. Absolutely. To make the time and just like anything else you would do for your health. I mean, I can't tell you what a change it's made in my life. Um, And as someone that has struggled with anxiety since I was a child, I mean, that's really where the meditation started for me was more as a coping mechanism for this debilitating anxiety that I was having. And Um, for me, it was really centered around every night. Well, not every night, but I would have these feelings of when I would fall asleep, I would start this kind of cyclical thinking where I would get spiraled out of control about death. And death has always been a major trigger for me, feeling scared, um, and worried that the afterlife was just going to be this foreverness of me being alone. Um, and it wasn't until I really dove deep into meditation to learn to calm my mind and to sit with my feelings that I realized like, this isn't about dying per se. It's about my fear of being alone. Um, and once I was able to connect with that and of course feel spirit and build my relationship, um, I I don't want to say that that anxiety is gone because I'm still human and I love my life and I, you know, I want to be here as long as I can, but it's, it's this deeper sense of knowing now via meditation that has given me so much peace in my life that I know I have the tools to first get past these, you know, this kind of like tornado of negative thinking if I get in it, but also that I really can touch base with myself deep in a deep level, not in my head, but in my soul. And that is just the most incredible feeling to know yourself outside of your, your thoughts and your feelings and everything that races around in your mind, but to just sit with yourself on a soul level is, um, it's really transformational. At least it has been for me. Yeah. uh, Like spot on. Now, as far as like your anxiety is because my husband had really debilitating anxiety as well. And he's on the meditation path, but he's kind of in a different road, so to speak. But, um, can you say that like meditation was like your number one tool for dealing with your anxiety? Yes, I can. And I've done years of therapy and I am a full supporter of 
therapy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, um, it's wonderful to have a a neutral perspective and point of view and dealing with some of this stuff because there were, there were issues that I needed to work through. Um, but, uh, a lot of it was just fear-based for me living Mm -hmm. in my head, um, and needing to learn how to get out of my head and my thoughts and let them pass instead of trying to control them. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, when I hear, people saying, Oh, well, I can't meditate. I just, I don't know how to do it. I can't do it. It makes me laugh because, (laughs) you know, hi, I'm a total type A personality. When I started meditating, like I was like, I can't do this. You know, I, I can't get my thoughts to not float through my head and like understanding that that's the whole point of accepting that like your thoughts are going to flow through. You can't, you can't control how your meditation practice is going to be. It is going to be what it's going to be that day. Um, but to try and let it be what it is and not fixate on what you think it should be, if that mm. makes sense, is really been key. Um, yeah. I think too that as far as meditation is concerned, people think it's about stopping your thoughts and it's not. Right. By right. any means. It's more about observing them and being yes. able to be, you know, not connected to them in a way and not controlled by them. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, you have no, uh, I hate when people are like, I can't stop my thoughts. Congratulate. Nobody can stop their thoughts. Yeah. Hello, I've been meditating for three years. Experience. I can't stop my thoughts. I right. can't stop my thoughts. <laughs> you know, like it's not about stopping your thoughts. It's about not letting them control you and tell you who you are, what you do, you know, your right. inabilities. And it's about observing them and understanding that a thought is just a thought. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, it's not who you are. It's not what you do. You just have to kind of roll with it. Right. And, you know, that's, that's a big thing with meditation because I think that I truly believe that every single person walking on this earth can benefit from meditation. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Whatever yeah. you, whatever, even if you are so happy, so content, you know, and you don't struggle with anxiety or depression or any sort of mental health issues, there's still room for improvement. And Mm -hmm. meditation gives you that tool where you can disconnect. Right. And so meditation doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't always have to be a spiritual thing for you. Right. You know, we talk a lot about it in spirituality because it is that connection between, you know, ourself and the divine clearing that space so that those messages can come through. But, uh, you know, meditation can also be giving gratitude for the things that you're thankful for in your life. It could be asking, you know, for help or for forgiveness. I mean, those prayer practices, if you will, too, for people that are part of an organized religion, all of that to stop your mind and to sit with your feelings and your thoughts and yourself. Um, while it is a very spiritual experience, I always tell people like, you don't have to, you don't have to make it about a spiritual thing. It can be simple right. as trying to calm your anxiety, which is how it started for me, which is just mm-hmm. connecting with my breath. Um, you know, and for like people that struggle with high blood pressure or, you know, there's medical conditions that have shown that meditation can help with that. Um, there's so many wonderful purposes, like you said, that it, anyone can benefit for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. Like I said, just like with you and me, we didn't start meditation to become spiritual, I think. Right. I think it was yes. more of like, I need, I know that I need to take better care of myself and my mental health and my emotional health. And this is a great tool. It's free. I could do it anywhere. And because of this, because we learned to sit in silence and sit with our soul, that's when spirit started talking. And for me personally, you know, being able to sit with my own soul when spirit started coming through and I felt the presence, it really wasn't scary for me. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some people would freak out, you know, (laughs) but like for me, it was just kind of like, I, I feel you. I feel you. I know you're there. Mm-hmm. You know, it was not scary. And, you know, now it's just completely transformed my life because it's like I, the dead can do so much far wor- far less than the living can to you. Right. Right. You yeah. know? Absolutely. So, Yeah. So what, you know, as far as like your mediumship is concerned, because you guys, she is 
an incredible medium. I was so blown away a lot because she's so evidential. But what? let's talk about some of your experiences when it comes to connecting with spirit. Um, what were kind of like, you're like, I don't want to call them red flags, but what were some points in your life that were like, okay, that was a little weird, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, <clears throat> I always felt things like thinking back as a kid, like I would go to my grandparents' house, which wasn't really old. They had this old farmhouse they moved into um, when my dad was like five years old. So they lived there for like 60, 65 years. Um, and the house was built, I think around the beginning of the 1900s. Um, but I, there was something about the upstairs that I, there was just energy there. Um, and as a kid, I was like, I'm not sleeping in the white bedroom. There was just something about this bedroom. It was all white, white bed, beautiful sunlight and everything. Like it was a beautiful room, but I just did not like sleeping in there because I felt like there was always someone sitting on the bed looking at me. And I would tell my parents this and my sister this, and they all just kind of like, you know, it's not that they didn't believe me. I didn't know what it was either. I just know I didn't like being in that room. Mm -hmm. Um, and two, I would, I would just know things like, I don't know, people would ask me questions and I would just have a sense of knowing about something. And, um, I don't know. It just felt like I was a really good guesser. Like that is just what I told myself. It was just like, gosh, I just must be good at kind of guessing things about people or their life or. Right. Um, I, I always know. thought that I was just like a bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> right. Like I would just like, you know, someone would ask me or we would be, you know, someone would come up in conversation or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I would just blurt out what you know, was going on or something yeah. and like the other person would be like, how do you know that? And I'm like, right. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a profiler. Right. Yeah. Maybe you know I'm what I mean? Was, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was just really good at reading people. Yeah. And that was it. And that's so funny that you said that because I, as you guys know, I just got my real estate license and no joke. I went into this beautiful house built in 1920 old farmhouse. And we're looking and I'm previewing this house and I go into this one room. It is a white room, just like how you said, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. you know, old queen bed with, you know, a white duvet and everything. And I'm just looking at this room with another real estate agent. And I'm like, there's a woman in this room. She's, she's right there. Mm -hmm. And I can't say this to this other woman. Like she (laughs) like, right. But I am like, (laughs) I'm just straight up staring at this woman in spirit. She's in a rocking chair, just rocking back and forth. She's, she looks like a grandmother. And the funny thing was, was that the other woman said, Oh, it's a little chilly in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, like, yeah. Yeah. And she just like, she just said it was bad ventilation or, or like, you know, because it's such an old house or whatever, right. no carpet in the room that it can feel draftier and stuff. And I'm like, that's not it. No. <laughs> that's not it. No. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, um, that's a lot of that kind of stuff happens and you just so many times, like what happened? Like a couple years ago, my husband who owns his own business, he had a problem with a couple of the employees where they were fighting and stuff like that. And he was like, why, you know, one of them walked out and it was like, he was like, what is going on? It's like, you know, I have a bunch of children that I have to babysit. And I was like, oh, well, it's because it's because Carlos ate this guy's food and he's looking at me. And I was like, (laughs) No, because there was only so many enchiladas left in the hot and he, everyone knew that he wanted them and he went and ate them and he was like, (laughs) okay, whatever. And then like a couple hours, he, he talked to the person that walked out because he was, you know, and he was like, yo, I wanted my enchiladas. (laughs) You're like, I told you. (laughs) Yeah. And Tony just kind of like looked at me like, how did you, did you watch the tapes? And I'm like, I don't even have access to your tapes. (laughs) You know? know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. I just know these things. Yeah. Yeah. You should listen to me more often. (laughs) Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, I, I have this, I too, when I was little would, there was something about, um, I would get like, I don't want to say visions, but it's like same with that knowing, um, 
there would be certain places that I'd never been to before. And I just knew like X, Y, Z had happened there. And Mm -hmm. I guess as like an example, um, so my, my dad is really into being outdoors and he raised my sister and I to do a lot of hiking and camping. We spent so much time outside as a kid. Um, and we would go on these like amazing backpacking trips out West in Wyoming and the Dakotas and Canada. Wow. Just incredible. Mm. And we would be driving through places and my dad has a PhD in history, so he knows like everything. <laughs> oh, that's and, cool. Yeah. And so yeah. we would be sitting in the car and driving through these like beautiful mm. open spaces. And my dad would be talking about, well, this would be a certain, this was a certain place where a particular battle happened, or like this is, you know, a place where, you know, Native Americans had lived and this had happened, this had happened. And I could see in my mind's eye like kind of flashes of what had happened. And as a kid, I thought it, I just had a really incredible imagination. Yeah, me too. I also had a, um, imaginary family, which <laughs> now I question a lot, like <laughs> they really that imaginary. Um, but I would have these, these very intense visions and feelings too, that I was like connected almost to what had happened. Um, and again, I thought it was just because I had a really incredible imagination, but I have that same thing now as an adult, I'll be driving down the interstate and I'll drive by something and I'll have kind of a vision and a feeling of a certain time period that will come to me. And Mm -hmm. I, you know, just picking up that residual energy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's that, that's so funny. You said that because my, my dad always said to me, he's also a history buff, which is really funny, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. he always said like, you know, with all, like when you start a new grade, they like send home a questionnaire, um, Mm -hmm. you know, about your kid and like what you, how you would, and every single time he would put vivid imagination. Right. Every single, like from like first grade to like fifth grade, it was always like, I would literally, cause I sat next to him at dinner and he would always just be writing it. And it was always the first thing was vivid imagination. And I was like, I just thought that's what everyone had. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think that's definitely a key with, um, you know, having an extremely vivid imagination and like, even like what you said right now, like I'm still very visual. Like I can yeah. picture things in my mind that I don't, I just think it's like, I, you know, I'm, I need to get grounded, you know right. what I mean? Because I, yeah. I'm always like up in the clouds, <laughs> but yes you know, usually that's a, that's a sign that you have a very strong clairvoyance, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so yeah. So, oh my God, this has been so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So let's talk a little bit briefly about the intuitive souls membership, because yes. I know that there are people out there and I started this membership because I wanted to create a space for people like me you know, Mm -hmm. who want to dive into personal and spiritual development, but also have a place where you can talk about this crazy shit. (laughs) Right. Yes. You know, so how, you know, how, tell me, you know, and just be honest, how is it, how do you like the membership so far? Well, you know, I love the membership because I won't leave you alone. (laughs) (laughs) You can't get rid of me. Um, No, it has really been so life changing for me. I mean, I left you this message a couple weeks ago, like crying because I feel like I found my people. And, you know, if you go back um, and listen to some of Erica's other podcasts, there's one of the first, I feel like the first season you talked about, there was an episode about awakening and um, how lonely that process can be. And it isn't until you go through it that you realize you can be surrounded by the most loving, supportive people in your life, but if they have not had a, an experience, a personal experience to awakening to this, um, this part of their life, there, there's just no way for them to know how to um, support and connect with you. Right. And I have the most incredible husband. He's so wonderful and supportive, um, but he's just, he's not in that. He hasn't had that experience. So he doesn't know or understand when I try and talk to mm-hmm. him about these experiences that I have, he's happy for me, but he can't empathize in that yeah. way. And, you know, likewise, I think most of us, when we start this awakening, um, it's, it's a very special and sacred thing that happens. But like I said, that, that keyword is kind of this loneliness as well of 
you just, you yearn to connect with people. I think part of it is our human nature. We want to be validated, which again, I think being a type A personality, I want, Mm -hmm. I want someone to tell me that this is real, which (laughs) something I've learned from, (laughs) from the membership is Erica has this like wonderful quality about her where she, she is supportive and guiding but she does not give you the answers. She gives you the tools to find that. So you can find the answers for yourself. And I think that is what has like turned the light on for me um, was learning that I had to kind of force myself to trust the information I was getting because I would never ever be able to say that I was getting messages from spirit without being in our circles and having the opportunity to read for other people and to just surrender um, in front of others. Like the first time that I did it, I was so terrified, but every single time that I get feedback or that I'm with people that I trust and are there and encouraging me, it is just, it builds my confidence, um, as a medium and as a psychic. And also for me as myself, just loving that part of myself instead of questioning that part of myself. Right. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing because I think that everybody in our group is so intuitive. They are so connected, but Mm -hmm. the biggest thing is learning to trust yourself and just kind of, you know, that was a big thing for me because I didn't realize (laughs) what type A I was until like all this shit went down. And, you know, and I'll say it like for the first year of me, you know, D- diving into my psychic and mediumship development, I would do tallies like for every single correct psychic psychic reading I did, and for every single correct mediumship reading, as well as the ones that like I completely, you know, shit shit the bed right, with. just for my own psyche, just to see like, okay, no, this is real, this is real, this is not me, you know, making this stuff up. And mm-hmm. I I say to everyone who's having a hard time you know, being like, uh, is this actually happening? Start doing tallies because it's going to shock you. It really is. You know what I mean? And, and there's so many Facebook groups out there, um, that will allow you to, you know, psychically read, um, photos and stuff like that. So definitely check those out. And, Mm -hmm. And even, you know, asking friends or family or something along those lines, if you can, help them out and maybe strengthen your skills, just giving them what you're getting because you'd be surprised that you may think, you know, someone extremely well, like a friend or something like that. But when you dive deeper into it and you're actually reading the energy that is within their aura, you're going to, you might find things that like, they don't talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, so absolutely. Yeah. But I did I'm so happy that you guys like it because like I said this this membership is something that like was I I I can't take credit for it. This was kind of like intuitively downloaded within me mm-hmm. that it's like you need to create a space <clears throat> for these women to be okay and and you know strengthen and not question themselves so much. Yeah. Y- you know what I mean? Yes. And I also want to yeah. add that there are a lot of, I mean, I'm sure you can find a lot of, um, you know, similar groups and stuff and very various places around Facebook or the internet. But what I love is that it is, we always have a focus for, you know, the month that you lay out that we can, Mm. we can build and learn upon. But it, I'm thinking particularly about this last month, we had Mm. a topic that we were going to do and everyone was just kind of like, not feeling it like Mm -hmm. stuff. Like I had had some personal stuff going on in my life. And I was like, listen, you know, I trust you guys. I wanted to open up and share. And it was like the message that needed to come through for all of us. It happened to be cord cutting that week. Like Mm. we kind of switched topics because that was what was being called for us to work on. Yeah. You know, and when you're going through something that's more of a structured course in a workshop, which those are wonderful too. And there's definitely a place for that having a circle for you to just open yourself up and be with other people that are like-minded, that you trust, um, that you can share a part of yourself with. That's not just based on like what you like to do and where you live, but more on that soul level. There's so much healing there. Like, yeah, man, I just realized like all this stuff that has happened in my life between relationships with my family and some friends and people in my past that like, I thought I was okay with, 
And then you start mm-hmm. on this journey and you're re- you realize like, wow, I've actually got a lot of shit I need to go through yeah. and work on. Right. And thank God I've got people that can be supportive instead of judgmental because, right. you know, you guys have a neutral perspective on that. You're not right. judging me based on, you know, a friendship or like a something going on with my mom or whatever it is. Um, right. You're just there to help highlight and guide so that whoever is, is in the group that needs that healing can find the healing that they need. I, like, I what, noticed what a gift. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that too, that like maybe you'll open up about something that's going on in your life. And then I noticed that somebody else, like when we're in the zoom, you can kind of see them thinking about something that's going on in their life. You're like, wait a just, second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, really healing. And it's just so amazing because everybody, um, you know, and we go into these circles, I think that it's just like, we all go in being like, listen, we're not perfect, mm-hmm. but we know we have a connection to spirit. And sometimes yeah. we are doing mediumship and spiritual mm-hmm. development work. And then other times we end up talking about things that we're still healing. Right. You know, and I think that's the beauty of it. And, and I'm just so happy that like the universe brought you to, oh this because it really is like it's not even all about me because what I've learned is like when you get we all have something to give you know what I mean it's not Mm -hmm. all about me yes I will you know totally be the leader but at the end of the day it takes a village and sometimes like so many of you we have another amazing um amazing member Lee where she kind of schooled me on some things that I was going through yeah. You know what I mean? And it was just like one sentence she said, and it was like, oh my God, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You know? And I think that's the best thing about this is because you're getting so many light workers in yeah. one place. Yeah. You know? I think that's the greatest thing. It, it's just amazing because you're getting so, you're getting the best of like everything, you know? Yes. And I always am <clears throat> in such like a high vibe after we've had our little our circle time. Like I never yeah. feel like drained, you know, there are some people right. in my life that I love them and I spend time with them. And then I'm like, God, I need a nap. Like I'm so emotionally <laughs> and energetically drained from them. Um, yeah. They bring down my vibration. And whereas right. like when we're together in our circle time, it is just like, you just feel that vibe between yeah. everyone. And it's, it's just amazing. I love it so much. I look forward to it. Um, every time we have our our circles. It's awesome. Yeah. We're having one in 20 minutes. <laughs> I know. Yes. It's a so good day. Exciting. Yes. Yeah. So last thing I want to ask when you, if there is someone who is listening, who is maybe, you know, dealing with a dark night of the soul right now or a spiritual awakening, whatever you want to call it, and maybe questioning their intuition and downloads, what is something, what are three pieces of advice that you would give them right now? Um, stop questioning yourself and trust, trust that gut feeling, um, because it's always right. And for a lot of us that are moms, we call that the mom, the mom intuition. That's the same thing. You know, right. if, if you have that strong feeling that something is off, wrong, good, bad, whatever, but it is an overwhelming feeling. It's real. It's a hundred percent real. Um, the other thing I would say is try and <clears throat> keep an open heart, open mind to what you think that this experience will be for you. Because as soon as you start trying to, to define, um, where your path is going to lead you and what that label is for you, I think that's where we get stuck because then Mm -hmm. you're trying to live up to other people's labels, other people's standards. When in reality, that doesn't matter. You know, as light workers, we're not here to change people's minds about, um, how they, how they view us, we're here to heal them. And for me, something that I got really stuck on was I had this, a lot of preconceived notions about what I thought mediumship and psychic work would be like. I mean, I thought it would just be like a lightning struck from heaven would giving me all this clear cut information. And, um, it's not, I mean, I think in one of your other podcasts that you had with Jenny, you talked about Mm -hmm. mediumship being like, picking up a 500 piece puzzle and putting it all together. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about what it was, should be like, 
And that's kind of where I got hung up. And once I kind of let go of that um, and, and what I thought it should be like and let it just be what it is, what, what this experience is going to be, is when like more magic started happening for me. Mm. So that's the other piece of advice. And then the last piece I would get is just to be patient and kind with kind to yourself. Um, I didn't realize until I started this journey how much I lacked self-love and not even the kind of self-love where it's like I looked in the mirror and didn't like what I saw. It was more just giving myself some credit where credit was due. Like mm-hmm. I am a damn good mom. I am a good partner. I am a great friend. Um, and you're amazing. <laughs> you're an amazing makeup artist. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's hard for me to just sometimes give myself that, that love back. Um, and not even aside from just the labels too, of like being a mom and a partner and a makeup artist and a business owner, like I know that I have a lot of love to give, um, other people and I deserve to give that love back to myself mm-hmm. and finding ways to slow down so that I can listen intuitively to what my body needs, what my soul and my heart need, um, is so important because we just get so stuck up in our thoughts and stuck in our mind. And I am like the number one offender of that. Um, and so sometimes there's just days where I realize like, you know, I had this other stuff that I need to do and it's okay for me to cancel plans because I feel like I need to just slow down today. Mm. You know? I need to listen to that voice inside of me and also to give myself some credit. Like, you know, I, I worked hard or it's tough being a mom sometimes. And, um, it's difficult trying to juggle my professional and my personal life. And, um, that's okay. Like, and I am loved regardless. So Mm -hmm. that's a big one. I mean, I feel like that for all of us is like that light part of that lifelong journey of, yeah, as we change and we grow accepting kind of the old skin that we shed and coming into right. a new chapter, but loving ourselves through all of that, man, that's tough, but it's, it's so important. It is. It's definitely, I think it, it's that you, I don't think, I don't think you're ever going to completely and fully, you know, embody self-love because, yeah. you know, it, we are such diverse human beings. We are so diverse and, and, I think though, you know, being in this group and, and on this journey, what I've realized is like, above all else, you don't need to be a hundred percent with your self love, but you need to know that it comes first Mm -hmm. in your, in your life, regardless Mm -hmm. of, you know, your relationships and stuff like that. And for me, that has been a real life changing thing. Yeah. You know, understanding that I love my kids. I love my husband, but I love myself more. And and that might sound really bad, but loving myself more makes me a better mom and it makes me a better wife. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Right. And I mean, if you think about the big picture of the universe and us being all light and all connected, how are you supposed to love someone else and give that love freely if you can't you know, turn that inwards as well. How can you find something? How can you point out things about someone else that you think are so amazing and wonderful and you love them for the good and the bad, but you can't also do that for yourself. Like that is such a, it's, it's such a stopping point. You know, you will never get where you want to go spiritual or elsewhere. Um, if you can't, if you can't put that back on your own, on yourself and on your own heart. I just got such a good idea for circle today. Oh (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love this conversation. You guys. So good. <laughs> thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much for coming oh, you're on. Welcome. If you guys are interested in joining the Intuitive Souls monthly membership, please go ahead and head on over to ericarusso.co slash become a member and check it out. All the information there um, is going to give you what this membership is all about, what you get. And yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in there. And just so you know, the doors will be closing um, probably quickly. So if this is something you want to do, definitely just jump in. Like I said, it is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy with it. Um, and the doors will not be opening until probably 2020. So definitely check that out. You guys, it's been a pleasure and I will see you next time.